Uh, but for now, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Tillman. Uh, would you like to put this on? There's a mute switch on the top. Uh, so Tillman uh, Freud from uh, TU Darmstadt on uh, robust design of active systems. Uh, so when you're ready. Okay, there's a Hello. Oh, okay. Okay. So I welcome you to my presentation um, today at the ISORT conference. Um, the title of my paper is Robust Design in Active Systems, an approach to considering disturbances in the selection of sensors. And I begin with an overview of the agenda of my presentation. First of all, I want to introduce you the project that was mm, behind the paper, a 3D servo press. Um, then the next point is uh, uh, a focus on model-based system analysis. Um, next, we will have a look at uncertainty in active systems and robust design. And uh, finally, I close the presentation with a conclusion and outlook. So, first point is uh, 3D server press. Um, the background, as I said before, is that uh, we had a project together, uh, a cooperation with the Institute for Production Engineering and Forming Machines, called PTU, at the Technische Universität Darmstadt. And um, these guys had the objective to develop a 3D servo press, a free bending machine um, that is uh, capable to adapt for variability. And uh, this variability con uh, contains different production processes, uh, varying conditions, and varying material input. Um, on the left side, you can see a depiction of this machine. Um, well, it, it's not really important for the presentation. You just have to know that um, it's a forming machine. Uh, it's, uh, well, it's, it's used to realize a bending process. That's all you have to know. Um, and their approach was uh, the implementation of an active system to realize the adaption. And that was the point where we came into the project um, uh, from the, the Product Development Institute at the Technische Universität Darmstadt um, because there was a need for a methodical support for the designer uh, to realize active systems. The problem is that active systems cause additional uncertainty through uh, additional complexity additional components, relations, interactions, and uh, things like that. Well, okay. So, um, we started with a model-based system analysis. And the model we used is quite complex, so uh, I'm going to, to describe it uh, step by step. Um, first, let's have some definitions. I already said it was a model-based system analysis. So. What is a model? Um, it is a simplified and abstracted representation of complex reality. And a system, in, in our context, I know it's not really a definition, but um, a system uh, in a technical context contains of technical processes as well as technical products. So we needed uh, two models to describe the technical system. So, first of all, um, let's have a look at uh, the process model. Um, a process is defined as the time-dependent and purposeful transformation of an operand from one state into another. Okay. Um, on the right side, uh, you'll see um, an example for a process model. It's a model that we're uh, using very often and uh, it's, it's useful. Um, and you can see on the left side the initial state um, and properties from the initial state are transformed into a final state during the process. 
Um, so we have the properties at the beginning, the properties at the end, and the transformation in between. Um, yeah, let's have a look at an example for that. Uh, imagine the process that we want to bend a heat dissipator. And at the initial state, um, we have a workpiece that is just a, a piece of sheet metal. And the property, for example, the bending angle is nearly zero. And after the process, um, the final state, the property of the bending angle has changed its value. So this is the process. On the other side, um, there is the appliance model um, or functional model. And this is defined as the causal relation between input and output parameters. Um, on the right side, you see uh, an example for such a model. It's a black box model. Um, in our example, uh, the appliance is the bending machine. And that transforms um, input, uh, the electric energy at the input, uh, to a force mechanical energy at the output. So um, now uh, I said that a technical system consists of both the process and uh, the product. Um, on one side, we have the transformation perspective. It's a time-dependent transformation of properties and things like that. On the other side, the causal perspective, the relation between input and output. And um, the question is now how they can be combined. Um, and the answer is that appliances realize processes. So to have the, the system perspective, um, we can write it that way. On the other side, the process, and there we have the machine that realizes that process. And um, these thoughts are the basis for our model that uh, we used to the project. This is an overview uh, of the whole model. You already know the process and uh, the appliance. There are additional elements, uh, that is the environment, resources, and the user. And we also have to model the relations between them. There are intended and unintended interactions. Um, and additionally, the appliance model contains of, um, of some uh, elements. And these functional elements, um, well, following a little bit of par and bytes, um, uh, are storage, actuator, transmitter, controller and sensor for uh, the active systems, and material energy and signal flows. So, this is the whole model we used. Um, yeah, now let's have a look at uncertainty and robust design. Our goal is controlling uncertainty in active systems through robust design. So, um, <laughs> some definitions. Uncertainty occurs in processes if process properties cannot be determined. And um, when I'm talking about active systems, I mean that we need additional energy for the adaption, and that includes semi-active and active systems. Uh, well, I have also a definition for robustness. A robust product is insensitive against occurring deviations or uninspected disturbances. Now let's have a look at the example of the 3D uh, servo press. Um, our goal is that we have no unintended deviations of the process output. Um, but there may occur variations in the processes itself, the process, sorry, the process input um, and the environmental conditions. Um, variations of the process are um, not part of this presentation. Um, and uh, before we came into the project, uh, the guys from the PTU already had an idea for the adaption for input deviation. Um, in our case, uh, that can be varying uh, sheet metal properties, Young's modulus, thickness, width, and uh, thing like, uh, things like that. Um, and they decided to implement an additional process um, for measuring the relation between force and uh, deformation before executing the process. So 
they can adapt for the variability um, through an additional process. Um, well, uh, the first point uh, where we uh, worked with them together was the adaption for environmental deviations. Um, uh, they occur in form of uh, disturbances that can be dirt, humidity, uh, radiation, and heat, and things like that. Um, and what we made uh, was the development of a, a design catalog for sensors. Uh, I forgot to say that first of all we focused on sensors in uh, the active system, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, we developed a design catalog for sensors. Um, and it contains uh, the measurement, measuring principles, some additional information, and disturbances and its influence on the sensor. And now let's have a look um, how that can be applied in our example of the free bending machine. On the left side, you can see um, the, the model of the machine. Um, and it has a distance sensor. Um, so we want to, or it measures the distance. Um, the principle is magnetostrictive. And there is a marginal influence of temperature changes, strong influence of magnetic fields, and a marginal influence of dirt accumulation. And now we can use this information um, to, to put the machine in a more robust context. For example, uh, uh, don't expose it to uh, the sun, for example. Um, that was the analysis case. Um, and to, to validate the model, um, we had another, another use case, a synthesis case, and that was um, the development of an innovative active stabilizer for a Formula student dart racing car. Um, and we applicated our new model um, and we modeled uh, some life cycle processes. And after that, we tried to, to analyze the occurring disturbances during all the, the phases of the product life cycle. And um, according to that, we selected a robust uh, measurement principle for the sensor. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's how it can be used in a synthesis case. So, what we did, we developed a model that is capable to represent technical systems um, through the, the combination of already existing models. Um, we developed an approach for the design of robust sensors using a design catalog, well, for, for disturbances. Um, and we had an application in analysis as well as in a synthesis case. What we still have to do is um, to, to prove the model because uh, we did not apply it in a lot of cases. Um, and as our goal is robust design in active systems, um, we still have to investigate more than uh, just disturbances and just the sensors. So the next steps are uncertainty in controllers and uncertainty in active component chains, so their interaction. Thank you for your attention. Do you have any questions? Okay. Mr. Sure. aiming and optimizing processes. The aim is to, to optimize the products that, uh, that uh, realize the processes. But for example, it, it can be used for the case we had to, uh, yesterday, um, the, the case of uh, moving from A to B, that's a, a process, and uh, we could have analyzed the system for some disturbances. Uh, for example, um, the force that, that turns the key, um, and it would be possible to, 
to found this uh, disturbance um, modeling the whole system. I, I can understand how modeling disturbance is, is, is a useful thing, and I can understand how uh, a catalog for sensor selection is a useful thing. I didn't quite see how your, those two met in your, your presentation. Did you? mm. I didn't see how your model actually helps you select the correct sensors. Uh, can you delve into that a little? Yeah, um, the connection between them is uh, the disturbance, the, the influence of, mm. of the disturbance. So we used the model to identify disturbances that occur. Um, and then we have a look, uh, how do these disturbances affect the sensor? And then we can select the sensor. Okay. And when it comes to identifying the disturbances, mm -hmm. I is it just up to the, <laughs> the engineer to think, OK, how many disturbances can I list? Does the, does the model actually guide you through um, to find them? I think it's, it's like a, a, a cognitive walk through, through the, the life cycle processes of the product. Okay. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's a support. Yeah. OK, that's interesting. Any other? Questions? No. Your question. Um, so uh, at this point, you're concentrating on the production process in a, in a quite, quite, quite defined environment. Mm -hmm. um, then you gave an outlet to, to, to from this to race car. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you? What would be a guess? How how big is the value of the model in these processes where you have no clue about possible influences? because the, the model that was the basis for this model, the Heidemann model, was uh, developed uh, just to describe uh, application processes. Um, and uh, of course, it, it, it can be used to, to be applicate, applicated in, in, in the context to identify um, uh, the conditions. But I think this is uh, some, some kind of teamwork. Um, you have to meet people that know uh, about the application processes and then together um, you can model um, the, the use phase. Okay. okay, Tillman, thank you very much for an interesting presentation.